speakers. And uh, the first one up is uh, Stefan Kraft from Red Hat with an interesting talk about um, API management as a key differentiator. So uh, here we have Stefan on stage. Hey, Stefan, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. Just uh, pop your presentation up on screen and then uh, I'll leave you to it. Great. Thanks for the intro, and I'm really impressed that you pronounce my name. I would say 99% correct, so really impressive. Uh, yeah, great to, to be at this conference. Of course, it's always a pity that uh, we cannot meet in person, but uh, that's how it is. Um, yeah, so my name is Stefan Kraft. I'm, I'm working for Red Hat in Austria and responsible for OpenShift and application services, which includes also API management. Um, I will also kind of embed this topic into the, let's say, bigger, big, bigger picture, as we see it as Reddit, and would like maybe to stress some things that maybe are not that obvious uh, if you come, especially from a very technical perspective. Uh, and that's what we see very often, that uh, API management is, is something kind of more, I would call it API control. And I think there's so much more to this, and, and that's what I want to cover in this talk. So let's take it off. Um, the agenda, why is actually API management, which is basically not really new. I mean, API management is on the stage since many, many years. Why maybe especially in these days, um, Corona, digital transformation, completely changing markets and so on. Why is maybe API, API management especially important uh, today? Then I will talk about what it is, uh, what we think it is. Uh, I'm not going into the, the very basics because I, I understand that this is a very advanced audience, but maybe give some special hints, maybe what should be considered as well as API management and maybe what's not, um, should not be part of it. Then of course, talking about what Red Hat is bringing to the picture and uh, then uh, wrap it up with uh, how to start. So why are we talking about API management today? Um, in fact, and I don't want to really kind of now discuss this in deep, uh, like the digital transformations, and I think you have heard so many presentations about it, but I want to really emphasize one specific thing, and that's if you remember the good old times of the value chain of Michael Porter, a very famous professor in Harvard, who was explaining, okay, you have uh, different uh, sectors, or let's say aspects in your, in, in your company, inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, you have certainly something like marketing and sales and service. And that's kind of common for most of the companies, even in the nonprofit se sector. Um, and then of course you would have some, what he called like supporting or secondary activities on top like HR and, and, and so on. These are the good old times. They have been very linear, very clear, very structured. But now actually we're moving to something like what is called value um, value networks. So if you are, I don't know, a, a player in the, in the tourism industry or you're a bank or whatever, that usually you, you certainly have your competitors and you will certainly have maybe companies that are kind of providing input and then you have your customers. But then on top, you have certainly other players like regulators, like maybe uh, media operations, maybe now, networks uh, or platforms like uh, Amazon that are super crucial for your business maybe, and you have to somehow interact also with them. And on top of this kind of uh, multiplying complexity, of course, we all know that the speed, the agility, the change has dramatically taken off. So things are really like changing very, very uh, fast and, and very surprisingly. And the thing is, of course, you need to have this business capability and that's certainly a business capability and not an IT capability to also kind of uh, catch up with, with your IT infrastructure to support this, this changing environment. And that's exactly what where IB, I, API management has its sweet spot that basically, even though maybe your back office systems have some kind of stability, some kind of, you know, um, structures that, that are like there for some, some, some years and some maybe even decades, API management gives you this kind of decoupling, this kind of flexibility to kind of still answer these uh, new requirements 
uh, even though maybe your back office systems more or less stay the same or cannot really catch up with that dramatic speed. So I think this is this is really crucial to understand, um, regardless whether you're working as really a, a developer or maybe you're directly responsible for API management or maybe you're in a in a innovation hub of your company. We are basically think about think about these different business models that are important that could be important in the future for your company. So, just giving one example again, um, taking a slide more from the scientific world, uh, which is a cluster, a typical cluster that that we see here. And this is just an example for uh, the tourism industry. Um, you see here it's 2003, so the source is quite old, but it's it's really just. To, to illustrate my points from, from, uh, from the previous slide. So if you, for example, one hotel, and uh, then typically it's not enough to just think about your competitors, other hotels in the, in the surroundings, but I mean, usually you're dealing with a lot of different actors in the industry that are influencers that uh, can help you, that maybe might be a threat and so on. And this might constantly change. Uh, so, and usually if you talk about, you know, having some kind of business relationship of whatever sort, then usually we're talking about information that is being exchanged uh, and, and, uh, and so on. So this is, and this usually then leads of course to, to API management in, in one way or another. So another angle to this uh, is, is coming from Gartner uh, who were defining this, um, this slide about this composable business architecture so everything is composable. You have modular blocks and you can very relatively easy kind of recombine them uh, just maybe to outsource certain things, maybe to insource, maybe to partner with some, some, some new, um, with some new maybe stakeholders that you haven't been interacting with in the past. I mean, a classical example, if you have an insurance company and you want to sell insurance policies, then usually you might think of, okay, why not, also interact or partner with maybe shops or with, uh, I don't know, post offices and so on. And then of course, the key is always that it is, it has to be very, very simple and very straightforward to onboard new partners. I mean, especially if you want to scale and you want to go at large, then you cannot afford that each time you kind of set up a separate project and, and, and things like this. So this needs to be really very smooth. And there, of course, API management plays a, a crucial role. So if you, if you think about this, um, it's always crucial to, to really think outside in, not really from the kind of the technical bottom up, okay, what kind of systems you have in place, what kind of structures, but really what could be, let's say, the, the outside um, requirements, what could be the, the, the additional value for the business so what additional actors might bring value to your company? Or, um, and then of course, a second step, how could you interact? And I mean, we all know this, this kind of e-commerce platforms, but now we're talking about mobile, we're talking about IoT, uh, internet of things, uh, where maybe you get data from, from other vendors or other, other partners. And of course, what could be, let's say the next step, maybe not tomorrow, but in, in six months, in, in one year and so on. So this is of course that uh, that usually people would really kind of think of that are maybe not very technical, but really think more in business models, think more how you can evolve as a company. So what are the typical business use cases that, that might play a role here? I mean, of course, uh, maybe starting from the, from the right uh, down here, the internal agility. So if you want to maybe reuse certain certain um, components, IT components internally, then APIs might might help to find these APIs and also to, to use them. But of course, then you have things like partner. You want to maybe engage with your partners that they can maybe provide information that you can maybe even transact via APIs. I mean, that's, that's kind of what we all know about. And then maybe some newer things like, for example, customer integration that even you want to integrate with your customers in B2B, that's, that's kind of classical, but maybe even also in the B2C business where you are like, want to engage with them via maybe mobile channels that they can provide 
certain feedback and so on. And that also could be a classical case for, for API management. And then maybe, which is really kind of the core, and of course, also if you think about business cases, maybe the easiest uh, when it comes to API management, that really APIs becomes your business. That means you earn money by providing APIs to the outside world and maybe partners or certain um, stakeholders would even pay for that. We have one, uh, one very famous case, which is weather news, but they actually provide weather information to the general public for free, but maybe for certain kind of power users, they would charge certain money with it and they made a good business out of this. So there are a lot of different, let's say, triggers that could initiate uh, API management discussion in companies. So coming to the next, what is API management and what is not? I mean, I think here it's kind of straightforward why API, API management is so crucial. I mean, if you think about an HDMI cable, which is kind of a simple, kind of imaginable, sim simple interface, if you look at the, in fact, the versions uh, that, that the uh, HDMI cable had already in the past, you see that there are a lot of different features just because technology was evolving, because customers were acquiring new features, the different uh, manufacturers and so on. So in these 16 years, they had seven major releases and 35 feature enhancements. Just, just think about it. It's a very simple, straightforward interface. And nevertheless, you have kind of still a diversity and still of an evolution with this. And of course, if you think about software, if you think about more business interfaces, then you can kind of imagine how much more complexity you might have. Of course, if you don't manage this actively, but basically just control it in the sense that maybe, okay, you don't allow anybody to access it. And that's sometimes the, the most tra straightforward thing, what people are thinking when they discuss API management is of course securing APIs, but that's just one small fraction out of it. So it's much more to it. Uh, if you think about the different stakeholders, the different consumers of APIs and how could they could use this. So if, you, if we uh, at Red Hat and, and if we discuss this with customers, then usually I'm using this slide, which kind of illustrates really the breadth of API management. And of course, it has something technical to it. No, no question about this. But it also really should involve the business stakeholders uh, to have discussions. How does this specific API could serve existing partners, existing customers? And how could this maybe serve customers, partners in the future, additional ones? How would this need to look different maybe that really additional consumers uh, would get a benefit of it? And that's actually, I mean, the consumers at the end of APIs are developers and users. So really keep these developed users, let's say, in the forefront of your thinking. What do they need? What kind of documentation would they need? How would you interact with them? How could you do and shape things different? Maybe that they can very easily uh, make use of, of your APIs. So what does Red Hat now offer for API management? Well, we, we do have a very broad solution and this solution was really from the very beginning based on what we call agile integration. And agile integration is something that um, Gartner was actually coining already some, some years ago, um, saying that this is really their way to go when you think about integration, API management, uh, because usually this, this classical enterprise service bus, ESP, is really hindering this agility. So they also said it needs to be actually pretty much the same as you, as you have uh, evolved in, in classical software development. Be based on the DevOps, be based on continuous integration, continuous development, being part of this kind of, of this classical HR circles that you have in software development. And that's how it looks in, in, in principle. You have this centralized integration from the past, which was on the one hand a good thing because it was kind of getting rid of this spaghetti code and this spaghetti architectures. Um, and you had, but usually very powerful, very centralized enterprise service bus in the middle. And that's actually how we see it going forward. 
being really decentralized, little modular, let's say, pieces of, of, of uh, integration logic and always API first. Always think about APIs in the very beginning. So what are the, the cornerstones of the Red Hat approach? The first thing I already mentioned, uh, our solution is fully distributed to allow decoupling. It is, or it is making use of, of containers, which is obviously in, in IT and development, the way to go to be really agile and always API first. That's kind of the cornerstones. And you see here the product names, um, let's say link to each of these, these principles. So the reference architecture that we are proposing is really if you have like the base microservices uh, in, the, in the bottom, this is usually what customers already have, to have something like a composition layer on top, uh, which kind of combines microservices and base microservices together to make them really more relevant for the business. And then have really a decoupled layer where you actually expose your actual APIs. This might look a bit as, as overly complex, but it is really helping big time, as I said in the very beginning, if something is changing maybe um, in the business, you want to onboard new uh, partners or new customers, but you cannot afford always to change your IP system, uh, sorry, your IT systems uh, like this layer three and maybe even the layer two, you can still do your changes in layer one because you have this, this uh, decoupling approach. What is still very important is that, of course, this gateway layer needs to be very thin, very, very scalable and really not becoming a bottleneck as such. So we really strongly propose that in this API exposure layer, you only have maybe security features, the business features, but don't do any, I don't know, transformation of formats or any other, let's say, implementation logic, which might really become a bottleneck. Uh, if you're scaling. And then, of course, you would have some, some features that we would also provide with, the solu with our solutions like caching, virtualization, messaging, and integration as such. So this is a bit more details to each of the layers, um, also with the uh, corresponding products. So how you might start? Usually, there's already something in place. I mean, I hardly can remember having a discussion with the customer who said, I don't know anything about API management. And in fact, I'm starting from, from zero. So usually there is some kind of technical gateway already in place. Uh, maybe you already are experimenting with some, some open source solutions, which is great to, to start with. Uh, but then I think it's really important to take this outside in approach that in fact you think what your consumers, what your partners, what your business might require on top. And for this, actually, we have different offerings to get started. Really having this outside-in approach, we um, have defined a workshop which is called API as a product, which is basically more talking from the business side what could be requirements for, for APIs. And I will explain a bit more detail uh, in my, my last slide what this workshop uh, is about. Of course, you can always do a proof of concept with our solutions, uh, no problem. And you can even try it out. So the API management solution from Red Hat is called 3Scale, which is 100% open source. You can just go to the slide, uh, register and, and play around and, and uh, get, get a, a picture for yourself. Now, the last thing I want to cover is really this, this workshop API as a product, because I think it's really crucial and gives a, a very important and interesting flavor to the whole topic. So how does this work? Well, usually we, we really ask from our customers to have these participants participants attending this, this workshop. So usually, of course, if there's already somebody who's kind of owning the API product management, then this person should be on the table, but also have somebody who is really non-technical and thinks about really the business strategy or and or is dealing with innovations. And of course, then maybe from uh, IT to really understand what's actually possible to also have somebody from uh, like an IT or enterprise architect. So usually what's the results um, is exactly this, this, um, these topics I was discussing in the very beginning. What internal or external actors could be interesting maybe in the future with who we are not 
maybe interacting so far, or we do it maybe in a purely manual uh, or let's say uh, non-formal way. How could maybe they they be uh, onboarded, and um, what would this really let's say bring in terms of business benefits if we do this? And then, of course, what would be the gap? So, what would be needed for uh, realizing this? Well, the method methodology that we're using is, is just classical IT uh, or strategy tools. Um, we would bring, of course, from our experience with customers, some lessons learned, and then really more or less moderate the, this, this discussion. So the last thing, what could be the, the agenda? Well, having a company introduction, of course, is important for us to really understand the business model. Then maybe um, we or partner could then do the kind of the pitch, really, what is this API economy about? Uh, what are really the specifics? Then uh, discuss briefly our solution and then really start into an interactive discussion. What maybe from the outside world, what are good examples from other customers and, and then take it from there to, to real these results, which I was uh, mentioning in the previous slide. So this would be actually all from, from my side and now I'm, I'm happy to take any questions uh, as they arrived. Hi, thanks. That was, uh, that was a good one. Great, great. So, um, quick question from my side. You know, you've mentioned this API as a product workshop, but uh, if someone was interested in taking that, how do they, um, you know, get in contact with you? Is there a, a, a website you could give us or something like this? Well, the easiest, I mean, Reddit is presented in, in almost all countries in Europe. So, just reach out to your Reddit counterparty, discuss um what really is interesting for you and then of course they will shape um the workshop as as, as you might be interested so we don't have an official website for this it, it's really usually if customers or how, if we are in discuss discussion with customer we propose something like this uh, and if you're directly interested then just reach out either if you know already people there in, in your local countries or you can of course also reach out to me and i would then just route you through Okay, so I'll stay on the Red Hat website and, and get chatting to someone there. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I, I like the fact that you're bringing out API as a product because that's my baby too. So I'm very happy this. <laughs> you, gave, you gave one example of the, uh, you know, API as a business. Um, and just very briefly, maybe you could expand a little bit on that. You know, who was the, uh, who was the customer in this case? And Wait, the thing is, it's Wait and Use. That was actually, uh, is one of our, let's say, reference customers that we officially can mention. The other ones like uh, Skipol uh, Airport in, 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 in the Amsterdam. So, um, or close to Amsterdam, I think it is. Yeah, All right, it's, it's in the Netherlands. Uh, well, what they did is really, and, and that's actually an interest, interesting thing. And uh, Ellen, if you if you are specialized in this API as a, as a product, you know it very well, I'm sure. I mean, because if if we present this to customers, say, okay, um, would this be an interesting business case for you to also maybe charge something uh, for for APIs, or at least maybe make it part of your offering? Um, and then very often customers are like, well, we never thought about this. Um, and I don't think it's really for us. And then actually I'm asking a simple question, which is don't you have any data in your company that might be useful for somebody external? Mm -hmm. And then usually, well, yes, uh, as a bank, yes, we do. Uh, as, as an insurance company, yes, we do. As a telco, yes, we do. As a nonprofit, yes, we do, because maybe they are just gathering a lot of information. And that actually sometimes opens their mind to say, yeah, actually, it could be interesting, maybe not necessarily charging really actual money for it, but maybe attracting other participants by using this API to make use of this information. So I don't know any company in the whole world that would not have any information that is, isn't useful for, for anybody. I mean, that's, that's for me unthinkable. So I think uh, API... APIs or API management must be or is a topic for, for each company of the world. I, 
honestly. I, I couldn't think of any scenario which doesn't include this. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100%. I, I think it's a bit of a paradigm change, especially for, you know, the the API programs are led by, you know, more technical people and, and you know, thinking in a product way and about monetization and so on can be, uh, can be quite difficult, which is why it's good to get the rest of the organization behind the, behind the story. So uh, really glad you're, you're working in, in that way. Hey, um, I think that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much for uh, your talk.